Ай. Warning, warning. Two idiots are reading the SCP files on me vessel. No scallywags. So, I see you died in, in, in the underworld, Zagreus. Maybe you should listen to discovering SCP, you pathetic whelp. Is this our warning warning for the episode? No, it's just, it's just me. <laughs> Hold on, did you just get into Hades? Well, yeah, I've had it a long time. I've been trying, like playing it properly recently. Nice. No, no, that wasn't me like being like, OMG, you're late. I'm just like, I, I, I didn't know that. That's awesome. You're going to have so much fun. How many times have you beaten Hades so far? I've not beaten it once yet. What? Oh. It's okay, I can show you a thing or two. I'm pretty damn good at it. <laughs> he doesn't know the cheat codes. It's, well, the, the real cheat code, uh, if you're new, is uh, take the Athena dash and then just spam dash as you're attacking. And that's like easy mode. Hmm, interesting. Thank you for telling me. And then, and then also, you know, just like working up the upgrades. But like, if you're skilled, you don't even need those. Like, I, I did the 10 wins necessary to beat the main story in like my first 20 runs i think this guy <laughs> yeah but i'm really good at roguelites that's like the one kind of game i'm pretty good at usually well this is almost oh. like a roguelite podcast we start from the beginning every time we forget everything about scp <laughs> yeah i know right uh scp <laughs> what boons would our commenters give us <laughs> I <laughs> yeah that's the that's password. A, that's you the pass- password already record for the password. <laughs> yeah, this kind of defeats the point of the password, which is to see who watched to the end. But yeah, what boons would you? Oh, well, no get? one's gonna pick up the video to the one minute thirty seven seconds. <laughs> They're looking for the password. <laughs> They'll expect it to be in the middle. <laughs> I know, right? We gotta keep them on our, their fucking toes. Post in the comments what boon you want to give us if you were a uh, Hades players. Yeah, please do. Oh, hang on, my elbow's so itchy. You're fucking better. I'm not even joking anymore. You're fucking better. What okay? boons do you think the Gregorian generals would give out? Um, Could you about. imagine them just like, you click their thing and it fucking appears and August is like, what do you need, boss? December is chaos. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Execution ah. is ego. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh, Lord. Hey, but yeah, bad I- man, nice. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what oh, like. is that Dionysus? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Zagreus. He's skipper now. Um, anyways, SCP news, I was gonna say. This guy uh, told heard... me he has SCP news. I don't know what this news is. You this is what? not screens. Fuck you now. I'm no, not I doing want... the news No, anyway. I wanna know. I'm just leading into the SCP news. Well, I, I, no. I was just saying that I do not know what you're about to How say. So this is articles? No, tell me the news. This is news to me. I need the news. Well, well this is fucked up because there wasn't actually any news. I was going to do a bit, but now it's like tell me the bit. delayed so much tell that me the, the bit. bit won't be good. Tell it's me only the bit. awkward. We have to I was going to be more like, the delaying becomes the bit. I was just going to be like, <laughs> oh, I heard Cactus join the Illuminati and shit, but you fucking, now it's weird. Oh, uh, don't think we lost much. <laughs> I <laughs> yes. know, right? Oh, Lord. So I thought. Um, yeah. We had a bit of a salty time with it last time, but I feel like mm-hmm. we should go one more article into this series that we're reading. Do we have to? Well, I think we. I want to. <laughs> admonition? Like, yeah, this is no one's making us, I guess. But... I love how I said that. Like, I haven't really hated admonition. I just like they're long. I miss the short articles, you know what I mean? Back in the old days. Yeah. The first episode we read The Staircase, I see. Like... Yeah, that wasn't even that long. We got through that in like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, gimme, gimme, gimme. This is SCP-6659, Metanostic, by Dodo Devil, Lyrin, and placeholder... Um, <laughs> McDoctor, I almost said McD, like McDonald's. <laughs> Wait, did you say Dodo did this? Uh, Dodo Devil uh, did part of it, yes. I know Dodo Devil. He is a friend. Well, then you better chin up. Ugh, alright, chins up. Let's read this. Chins up? <laughs> chins up, beeps out. Chins up, <laughs> cocks ready. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> I was getting to it. Those... Okay. Rated uh, R. Omar Command. To assist in study and response to an emergent containment scenario, all applied metaphysics, tactical theology, and counter-conceptual personnel have been provided express ex- access to the following documents. They're working these fucking departments hard. No admonition. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Every week, it's like every fu- one of you fuckers needs to be 24-7 looking into the giant counter-conceptual spiral entity I almost before you get turned how- into a verb. 
with how large the foundation is and how international it is, there's got to be like backup teams, right? It's like tactical theology is busy sending the underdog team, and it's like all the like guys that were like they're in tactical theology, but they weren't good enough, or they were the bad boys, so they're in like the secondary team. Practical you know religion, I mean? <laughs> the department. yeah. Practical religion. Yeah, it's we like have tactical theology at home. <laughs> You couldn't make it into anti-memetics, so you're in the amnesia division. I'm like, well, the kind of conceptual is like legitimately that, I think, in some ways. Oh, uh, lol. Well, no, no, no. Right. They're like more weird stuff, I guess. I can't anyway, keep track we, of all these fucking We, we can get past this introductory. The, the second yeah. sentence. No, the first sentence, actually. <laughs> We're so good at doing podcasts, guys. The relevant security clearance has been temporarily lowered from level 5 top secret to level 4 secret. Oh, thank <laughs> goodness. Well, you can stop listening. <laughs> <laughs> warning, warning. Bottoms only episodes. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? What? Representatives of this file should have also been briefed on its contents. This is a bizarre episode already. If you believe. What's happening? I don't know. This is strange energy. <laughs> if you believe you've received this file in error, contact your supervisor and or site director and cease reading immediately. I believe I've received this file in error. We should go read 682 no. again. <laughs> Proposed scenario responses and or additional data requests are to be directed to Dr. Sandra Milton and Dr. John Blake, co-leads of Project Deicidium. Is that like killing gods, but as a fucking like science thing? Maybe. Deicidium. It's like an, a lethal injection for God. Hell yeah. This fucking needs it. What's the fucking Akiva radiation? It's like, I filled this with anti-Akiva radiation. <laughs> Say bye-bye to your powers, this Zeus moment, Zodia. my creator, I am enlightened not by any phony god, <laughs> but by my own intelligence. Oh my god, that should be a thing. They should give a god, like, a lethal injection to make him mortal. I'm no That'd professional so quote maker, but this is my ideal. Hang on, I lost a piece of my chair somewhere. Keep reading. He's talking about the back of it. <laughs> SCP-6659, <laughs> level 4 secret. Containment class Formiel. Secondary class Deicidium. Oh. <laughs> fancy, Ooh. fancy. Destruction class Etchy. Risk class Donga. <laughs> Donga! <laughs> that's, that's my favourite mispronunciation yet. And now we have what looks like a Hollow Knight boss looking at me. Yeah, this straight up looks like something Banker Paul would be talking about in the gamers chat. SCP-6659-A, which is apparently this thing. Mm. It's a big orb with a lot of holes in it. Yeah. Uh, tryptophobia warning. Yeah, there's a, you'll, you'll die. Well, actually, yeah. actually, I don't know if the, 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 the fear extends to us describing that an object has holes in it. This object has so many holes, it's like the, Swiss cheese. They're so I'm small. <laughs> you're oh, pressure. you're going to cry. I'm sorry, gonna I'm, we should stop like, trying to actually trick people with the fucking phone. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I thought I didn't think that was a thing. I don't know. I don't know. Now I feel bad. Now I, <laughs> I love, but I just love out in like twenty seconds. It really progressed from oh, we got that better be curved. We don't want to trigger people with tryptophobia to actively trying to do it. Well, I thought tri- I, the way I understood tryptophobia was I thought like the sight like freaked people. Well, out. Yeah, that's what I think as well. But it's like, I don't know. I don't. Have yeah, but not not. Yeah, so if I if you see me on Twitter tomorrow, that, so I'm anyone sorry, in the comments who has tryptophobia, please enlighten us. And if if you don't, yeah. please just pull some shit out. Of your you're ass. you're allowed to dislike this video if you have tryptophobia. No, you're not. I no, you're fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Just know that each dislike puts a hole in Tim. <laughs> Every dislike, a small hole will appear in one of your possessions. <laughs> Be yeah, careful. You keep going. <laughs> well, that's a maximum of one hole, so I don't know what's so scary about a single hole. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just like other ones. Assigned sites, oh my god, what is going on? Um, mobile site 184-A, site 184. Assigned is a mobile p- site like in a trailer or something? Yeah, hell yeah. Assigned departments, applied metaphysics, tactical theology, practical religion, counter conceptual, decommissioning, vessel authority, Captain Sweden Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Project leads Dr. Sandra Milton and Dr. John Blackie. Blake. John? 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 <laughs> the way you said it. Uh, John yeah. Blake. That's why I immediately like fucking corrected myself. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ooh. <laughs> Dr. John Blake is like a protag name for sure, oh, like yeah. in a detective novel. He's like, I'm John Blake. I'm here to. The day in war has met. I knew she was up to no good from the start. Yeah, this dame came walking into my office. In the hazmat suit. <laughs> the hazmat suit. 
<laughs> the dame wore fluorescent, <laughs> but I didn't need that to know she was danger. Guys, I have a feeling this video might get a part two. Special contain <laughs> procedures. The distinct components of SCP-6659 are currently housed in mobile site 184-A, as detailed in its site dossier. A high Why does it look like a giant spoon and or iron? I don't know. <laughs> A high you see it? I can, I can see it, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm taking a scoop of the ocean. Sayonara. Sick of my favorite primordial <laughs> soup. <laughs> a high security semi submersible research vessel. Mobile site 184-A was constructed from the remains of SCP Blub D to benefit from its various technological capabilities and latent quasi anomalous properties. It's magic. It has largely functions to facilitate covert research operations, often relating to one or more hostile groups of interest seeking to prevent or manipulate said research. Can, can I can I say something positive? Absolutely. I feel like I'm always talking about SCP tropes that I don't like, but one SCP trope that I do like is when like they know the magic shit they want the Foundation to have is too bullshit to justify. It's so they're just like, oh, it's made out of the corpse of an SCP. Fuck you. Yeah. We and don't know like, how it works. It just does. Solved. <laughs> yeah, it's anomalous. Fuck you. It was an SCP skeleton. You don't understand. It's, I love it. It's, it's a good trope. Exactly. It's a good trope. Its current default anchoring point is located near kilometers of Sable Island, Nova Scotia. That's in uh, Scotland, right? Um, maybe. <laughs> what's, Nova, what's Nova Scotia? It sounds like a fucking Final Fantasy city, if you ask me. Guys, I don't know about geography. Tell us what Nova Scotia leave, is. Leave, leave your thoughts in the comments. Don't search up. <laughs> Tell us. Give me your first thought. Any yeah, unidentified... There's going to be one guy from Nova Scotia who's like these fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> Any unidentified vessel entering within 10 o'clock while living more like, are you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> what? Because they've been Scottish. Yeah, cut out. Um, I cut myself I Actually, out. you know what? I think Nova Scotia's Canadian now that I think about it. <laughs> They'd be oh, like, are you, are you fucking dickheads, eh? Yeah, it's a Canadian province. Okay, I got it right the second. Time. A new identified vessel, and it doesn't fucking matter. Entering for 10 kilometers on it is to be redirected via cover S55, Delicate Marine Study, by Dr. Joto oh. Okujo. In the event yes. of a hostile party. Oh, you guys agree. In the event a hostile party attempts to approach it, the vessel must exercise its full submergence capabilities, descending to a depth of 150 meters for a period of up to 72 hours. Should any hostile party successfully board it, its onboard scuttle system is to activate, thereby triggering a series of explosive charges positioned along the vessel's length. A supermajority of crew members assigned to it are aware of, and either, either explicitly or implicitly agreed to, this emergency procedure. Yes. And the supermajority super implies mean? a minority. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess supermajority is like if it's more than just over 50%, like 90%. Yeah, but well, it's still 10% of guys who are like, I can't wait to see my family. <laughs> no! In the event that contact with it is lost, its emergency beacon is initiated or its scale system is activated. Our nation nautical force is stationed at dash a, slash a or to undertake search and rescue, mil military intervention, and or salvage operations as necessary. Assuming ideal detonation, SCP Blub D would remain unscathed for retrieval in the case of emergency procedure. Wait, so it's a still living SCP? I thought it was the remains. Well, dash D implies decommission, so the remains remain. They're pretty hardy, I guess. Oh, interesting. Crew members assigned to at the M site, but not actively involved in the maintenance and or operation of the SCP, are forbidden from descending below observate operational deck four, accepting approval from Captain Sweden Jones, as strictly necessary, or Doctors Swiss Milton Sweden and or John Milton. Blake. Or Sandra Milton or John Blake. <laughs> no, it's a new character. <laughs> Each of SCP-6, my favourite fucking name, I was Captain Sweden Jones, <laughs> new April <laughs> space character. <laughs> yeah, he better show up. Each of SCP-6659's components are only being activated, what is simultaneously or in isolation, following verification of confirmed overseer council order, and must be jointly initiated by Drs. Milton and Blake. Following activation, assigned technicians will perform a complete examination and diagnosis of the associated digital, biomechanical, and... Noetic systems comp composing the SCP. What is noetic? I don't know. Let me Google this word. Let's find out what it means, guys. Also, you gave me a brain blast when you mentioned Aetheral Space. I was just talking about how I love the trope of, like, when they make something out of a fucking anomalous thing's corpse. You should totally write in something in Aetheral Space where it's, like, a bunch of spacers or pirates or something. Like, sailing in the corpse of, like, some gene tyrant fucking creature that can space fare, you know what I mean? Nice, maybe. Like a biomechanical thing they're piloting. 
Doubt Noetic, by the way, is relating to mental activity or the intellect. Ooh, are you an intellectual? Absolutely. Nice. <laughs> I'm euphoric. <laughs> On this day. Addendum 6659-1. Theological Context. A foundation for reciprocal worship. Practical applications of human to deity relations. Why am I staring at God's ass right now? Because it's holy. It's <laughs> <laughs> <But> holy. <laughs> On worship. Oh Can my god, this feels like I'm in fucking Bible class here, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey guys. You need me to read? SCP is pretty cool. You know who else is? But you know what? It's not just about sacrificing people for the greater good. There's someone who sacrificed himself for your greater good. I want to tell you about yeah. him today. The, the, the truest SCP agent was Jesus Christ. <laughs> Big thumbs up. <laughs> Let's get the foundation started in Agent Christ, shall we? <laughs> like a fucking youth ministry for SCP. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you want me to read this, buddy? Um, Jesus, no cap, loved you. <laughs> I fucking... I have a love-hate relationship with youth pastors. They're so funny. Well, you, if you want, you can read on worship. Tell me about worship. Sure. I, I quickly... I read ahead the first sentence, and I was like, oh, just like the Among Us Wrath. Yeah. <clears throat> on this worship. is canon to Among Us canon. <laughs> Yeah. Gods exist because we believe in them, and to make us believe in them. The very nature of our relationship with the divine is reciprocal. We create beings of parahuman ability, whom we then elevate beyond ourselves and imbue with significance. These beings, in turn, rely on this recognition to define the scope and breadth of their influence and existence. Fundamental to this dynamic is the act of worship, an expression of recognition that embodies the deity in the psychosphere. Uh, antiquated term for new sphere which is in a new term for anti-memetics. Yeah. While gods are real, their existence is derived from and contained within the realm of human thought. Their measurable manifestations in the physical world are restricted to the f formation of totemic avatars. Jolly Moore, deific manifestations. Wait, wasn't there a totemic avatar that we saw in the deleted scene from on Quantum Sight? Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I, yeah, there is like, there's it, like an avatar of a god, yeah. Wasn't it like a totem as well? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> Despite this limitation, such conceptual entities are capable of enacting change in the physical world around us, and frequently do so to varying extents, performing miraculous acts, manifesting their presence through omens, and bestowing boons upon chosen acolytes. Zagreus? In the uh, name the of extended... Hades, Olympus, I accept this message. <laughs> it's just fucking... Oh, who's, hello, who's it's me, Tanny. Have a boon. <laughs> <laughs> Have a boon, won't you? Have a nibble the when you're at it. <laughs> Sorry, please continue. The episode's over. <laughs> Turn it off. The yes. word boon ruined it. <laughs> you said nipple. I said nibble. Oh, nib. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I thought you said like. have a. I thought you said have a nipple while you're at it. <laughs> I put one like, in. All right. <laughs> the curse. The extent. The extent of. I'm not strong enough. Help you have me. to be. The, people need, the, extent of nature the team these, needs you. You're right, you're right. The extent and nature of these direct interactions are shaped by oh. and reflect the worship of a deific entity receives from human or non-human persons. The wills and capabilities of deific entities directly correlate both to the perception of such by humans as well as their conceptual topography within the psychosphere. We created gods, and in doing so, offered them the power and influence to shape their own image, and our perception of that image. By this logic, though, shouldn't celebrities also be gods? Uh, well, celebrities actually exist, is the thing, so... I guess, but what about, like, the idealized... What about, like, um, a parasocial version of a celebrity? Well, that'd be, fucking, I mean? that'd be a good article. Like a, I know, right? Like a celebrity that like puts on an image for show that's not the real them, and so many people love and worship that image becomes, becomes a, god. a god, and then yeah, it like, tries to kill them. that's a good idea. Oh, dude, brain blast! Like, like, Jimmy what if, like, Jones. he becomes, like, embroiled in that whole complex he's, like, the prophet of the god that is his idealized self? <laughs> yeah, he has to... And which ends up making him his agent. <laughs> so he just takes an agent role and gets to live he the quiet life He gets possessed by the idealized version of himself. Oh, that's crazy. Dude, we have ideas right now. Write this I can down. imagine Someone anything. write this down. <laughs> Why was that so funny? Is that from something? Yeah. You don't see the image? <laughs> no. <laughs> Show me. 
Hold on. <laughs> Given this paradigm, the question emerges about an organization such as the Foundation ought to respond to threats posed by deific entities. Thus far, standard operating procedure advocates for preventative measures. Hang on, I'll finish this paragraph first. Okay. God damn it. Organized religion and acts of worship have been quietly nudged towards conceptualizations of gods as hands-off entities whose involvement in day-to-day affairs is inconsequential, or a uniform background presence that stabilizes consensus reality. While this method has been largely successful in ensuring hostile deific entities do not gain significant traction in mainstream culture and religious practices... Uh, current reactive measures to emergent threats are often inadequate. As directly combating the existence of a hostile god within the psychosphere is currently infeasible, the Foundation's response to active deific threats prioritizes dismantling systems of worship in the physical world that define and support the behavior of such a deity. Oh, that's kind of fucked up. Like, a deity's personality depends on its worshippers. Yeah. That kind of sucks for the deity. Like, do they even count as their own sapient beings in that case? Well, yeah, what it's saying there is oh, once it exists, it can influence the um, worshippers to influence it. Yeah, and their and their main containment is like making all gods kind of hands off. Yeah, which you could argue is why in SCP, like gods of traditional religions, no longer intervene because people view them that way, kind of, or at least a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. I can imagine. Is that Bill Nye? I don't know. <laughs> it's it's the, just a guy. Amazing image. I can imagine anything. That's you. <laughs> the every red day, light is what fucking does it for me. <laughs> That's you writing Aetheral Space. <laughs> I don't type or anything, I just do that word start scrolling on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how there's so many dragons. Oh my god. <clears throat> However, identification and neutralization of cult formations engaging in active worship of malicious or enormously threatening deific entities have seen mixed results, with consequences ranging from high mortality rates of assigned operatives and numerous threats to the integrity of the veil. The current method appears unsustainable. Deific entities are not locked to the physical world, including the cultural groups that engage in their warships. Through their manifestation in the psychosphere, they can traverse along lines of conceptual relation, touching and influencing different peoples around the world, inspiring new cult formations which themselves become and or splinter into divergent sects. I was just about to say, like, if you look at any big religion, there's a bunch of different sects usually. Would each sect have, like, its own version of the god, or would the god just have, like, a bunch of personalities? Hmm, interesting. I always like gods that, that like be... have aspects to them. Yeah. Like, wise. It's like I it's like I can be your angle or your devil. I love that too. Like I, anytime I, I run like D D and stuff, I always love to come up with a pantheon of gods. It's so fun. I love I, I, I usually go in like the like political bullshitty gods, like they all have their own like court shenanigans going on in the fucking upper plains. There's like that one Egyptian god that's like a fucking maniac and kills everyone and then it calms down and turns into a nice cow. Aww. And it's like, it gets nice. a different name as well when it does that. Yeah, it's too forms. It's like a fucking Pokemon. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> description. Uh, oh my god, we only just reached the description. Yeah. Way, John Blake, Journal of Tactical Theology, Volume 72, 1993. Thank you so much. Okay, go ahead. SCP-6659 is a foundation-designed eigen weapon developed for the neutralization of hostile deific entities. Deicidium class anomalies are employed by the Foundation in decommissioning of other anomalous phenomena. Oh shit, I'm sorry, I forgot it was my job to read the... My bad. I got you, bro. In future ones. Hmm? Uh, didn't you want oh, me right, to yeah. read the... Oh yeah, well... I... Yeah, sure, we can do that. That was just for the, the I... donkey. Oh, you want what we can do that from now? Oh, no, 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 never mind, never mind, you got this. <laughs> this oh, device you... is composed of three interconnected systems, which function to destabilize a given deific entity's embodied memeplex within the neurosphere preventing their conceptualization and consequently worship. These systems are... Oh, I, <laughs> I loves their fucking free systems. You, 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 see, you see what I see? SCP-6659-A. Tris- Trismegistus engine... To attend- Trismegistus! Trismegistus You didn't play engine. Persona 3, did you? Sorry. Trismegistus <laughs> signifier. Tits. <laughs> Derived... <laughs> <laughs> six, 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 nine, nine, hey, bro, nice tats. <laughs> Initially developed uh, by Dr. Vivian M. Woods for the conceptual mapping of communal human consciousness, authorized in completion of the Gottfried Research and Development Initiative. Project data locks to level 5 clearance. Dash A is employed to map existing relational lines of conceived association between a physical object and applicable mimetic constructs. In its current use, a totem, an item conceptually associated with a specific day of identity, is inserted into the device, which subsequently identifies and traces the boundaries of the relevant deific entity within the new sphere. Target fucking locked. 
So it fucking you put you put a god's totem in there and it gives you like their territory map. Their assassination coordinates. Their <laughs> their fucking like Far Cry three outposts you have to it's go. Like, do not worship plus IP. <laughs> it shows you like the towers you have to climb to unlock parts of the map. <laughs> This enables the entity's memetic constructs to be conceptually identified as distinct from a noetic quanta. It's like, I fucking see you. Noetic quanta? Is quanta like data? What the it's fuck just is like, quanta? Quant- like quantity of, like, of stuff, basically. Quanta is a river in Egypt. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know. Okay. SCP-6659-B. Gudril Jerry Conceptual Applicator. Having identified and isolated the target... Hi. It's a discrete. It's a discrete quantity of energy proportional magnitude to the frequency of the radiation it presents. So stuff. Or are acquired or allowed amount, especially an amount of money legally payable in damages. So stuff. Yeah. Having identified and isolated the targeted deific entity within the new sphere via, via SCP six six five nine dash A dash B acquires a conceptual framework of universal acceleration to all individual data points forming noetic constructs. As a result, the data composing the deific entity is accelerated to supraconceptual velocities, whereby the individual components of the metic constructs can only be conceived in relation to their relative accelerated movements. As a result, the lines of conceptual relations that form the construct weaken and subsequently dissolve, rendering the construct incapable of cohesively existing as an assemblage within the new sphere, and thus preventing any interaction between data points, both external and internal, to the constructs. So we fuck it up. Yeah. Dash C. Generation nine. A uh, seven. Seven. I, you're getting there. So that's very rough. Biomechanical data storage vaults. <laughs> Footnote. Adapted for use in SCB-6659 under advisement of Director Placeholder MD, PhD. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> it's it's my, like, fucking, my boy. Where, like, a guy walks in the sitcom and starts cheering. Woo! <laughs> the proficiency in the practical yeah. nanobiologies. Damn. So I need a um, uh, PhD. Ah, let me put it in your place. I don't know. That didn't make sense. Let's let me put it. you in your fucking place. <laughs> Direct your place, HMD. What's the H? I know it's supposed to just make holder. PhD, but what is the H? Holder. Placeholder. Oh, fuck you. That's true. What do you mean? No, I mean, fuck whoever came up with that. In, in canon, his name got stolen. That's why he is placeholder. That's... So dumb. Converters of 25 vats containing biomechanical computational devices suspended in the artificial cerebrospinal fluid. Love me some cerebrospinal fluid. If you like give me any techno babble, I'm like, whatever. It's like we put a computer into cerebrospinal battle fluid, like, I'll be like, checks out. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's cerebrospinal smart fluid. Uh, yeah, so the spine like connects to the brain and all the nerves run along that, and there's a little like, bit of wind. Dr- like, I've been drinking it for years now, and I can feel my brain getting bigger. Oh my god, this guy's the star of Eye Zombie. <laughs> Dust C is capable of storing and analyzing memetic data of conceptually isolated and accelerated data of entities without engaging in reciprocal conceptual relationships, i.e. worship. No paranormal, no parasocial relationships, yeah. Damn. The computational systems of SCP-C additionally monitor the ongoing processes of the Dash A and Dash B, while simultaneously providing a digi spheric ent- interface for human users to examine and interpret relevant conceptual data. Um, English, please. Um, it tells you what the god do. All right, so the A one gives you the god map. Yeah, it tells you where B1, it is. B one fucking kills it. Well, it fucking like locks it up. I think like it can't interact with anything once you've done that. I guess. All right. So God ping, Aether ping, uh, God never wire, and then um, I don't have an Aetheral space. This is just the hard this. drive for the stuff. The hard drive. It, so once you've got the never wire, it, like, it stores information on them without like giving them power. Okay, so you base, it's, this whole thing's designed to trap gods and yeah. tell you everything about them. It's kind of fucked up. It it's like god abuse. <laughs> it's like, please, my stuff, give it back. That's like the ultimate level. Sorry, of old man. Of it's humanity's time to shine. Take the sandals too. Has there ever been a young god? Like gods are always like, oh, we created humanity, or oh, we're like a time immemorial concept. Like I know in American gods, they had like the the internet god or whatever, mm. or like globalization god. Yeah. Like we need. Where's the modern gods at? Where's like the it. god of TikTok? <laughs> it will be a goddess because because it has a voice. Yeah, so true. <laughs> I'm the god. What's the TikTok voice? I don't know how to do it. Neither do I. It's I just like, know it exists. 
Yeah, it's like, um, I'm a god. I can't do it. It's so hard. Um, I'm a god. That's not it. That was just me doing the voice that you just did. <laughs> yeah. It's it's hard, right? Because we all know what it so- sounds like, but you can't really replicate it because it's not human. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Where's the god of new tube? Addendum 2. Project introduction. Project Day Asidon. Each on his rock transfix the sport and prey of racking whirlwinds of forever sunk under yon boiling ocean wrapped in chains. John Milton, Paradise Lost. 108-1283-1667. Is that Lucifer looking ever so sad? Uh, it's something alright. It's tiny Probably. bit off center. It's like my, that's like a Discord profile picture. Do you need me to read any of these, buddy? Um, you read the first one, I read the second one. Yes, sir. Dr. Sandra Milton, co-lead, Applied Metaphysics. Excerpt from Introductory Briefing, Project Deicidium. While the initial proposal for this project focused more broadly on the creation of an anomaly employed by the Foundation for the Decommissioning of Other Anomalous Phenomena, the subtext was clear. We require means to combat gods. Do we? We do. Foundation, for all its grandiose notions and ideas. What happened to just, like, we can't kill the SCP, we have to store it? Now we just, like, kill everything. Well, it is storing it, though. Its flirtations with concepts beyond the veil of normality remains an institution of bricks, mortar, bodies, and paper. Applied metaphysics does not reject this notion. We need to know where our limitations are, as it's the only way to push beyond them. 6659 is a culmination of that drive to extend beyond the physical. While the new sphere permeates every aspect of our lives, what it means to think, what we can and cannot conceive of, our ability to alter it has been unrefined at best. You should map out the psychosmace style. So if you, you like what you find, it, if you were to alter the new sphere, could you decide basically what's anti-memetic and what's not? Like what you, can, well, you can just well the new sphere is like all human thoughts. So you could make things impossible to conceive of, I guess. Uh, what what did they fucking? Do you mean the metaverse in, in Persona Five? Uh, is that what the well, new sphere is? The new sphere is kind of like that. Am I gonna run into the Joker down there in the subway? <laughs> That's not Persona 5 music it was meant that, to be. That, that wasn't even close to Persona 5 music. <laughs> The famous theme. <laughs> the thought of the fate of ringing. That sounds like <laughs> someone in like the 1900s sending a fucking <laughs> gram to a submarine. <laughs> <laughs> Missiles coming. <laughs> They're gonna steal your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to non-physical threats, the Foundation requires a new approach to accomplish its goal. The securing containment and protection of humanity and resultancy, resultantly normalcy at all costs. We've been dying aimlessly in the dark, hoping to pull it off. That's one thing I always wondered, because the whole thing is like, the Foundation secure, contain, protects, like they secure and contain anomalies to protect people. But as things go on, there's so much anomalous shit going on. I wonder if there is a canon where they just decide to full send, go like, Secure, contain, protect people because we we cannot contain all the anomalies, and they go underground like fucking Gurren Lagann or whatever. Oh, yeah. And they're like, "This is our this is our like Vault Twenty One, you where that keeps all the anomalies out for humanity. <laughs> Leave us alone. It's like, you cannot. I am the containment king. <laughs> and then and then like they find a reality bender and they kick him out of the vault, and he's like, "Please, I have kids." And they're like, "No, you're anomalous. Get out of here. You gotta, <laughs> Get out of here, stalker." <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool. <clears throat> Uh, where was that? Uh, uh, oh, we've been dying aimlessly in the dark, hoping to pull it off. We needed to become the scalpel, capable of exercising specific dangers with negligible damage to those living in the light. Wouldn't it be excising, not exercising? Because uh, I, I get what they mean by exercising, like exercise a ghost, but they talk about being the scalpel, so excising would be better, because you excise things with a scalpel. You remove them. It should leave a comment. <laughs> uh, I'm too lazy. That's where deicidium comes in. But these mimetic constructs, while these mimetic constructs are worshipped as deities, they each are only another anomaly to be understood and will be treated as such. Those who threaten the Foundation will be contained, their influence and danger mitigated, and the world will keep turning. Welcome to the team. We're glad to have you. Greetings, Commander. That's a lie. <laughs> uh, I, based on what I heard about the supermajority, there's a minority of people who are glad to have. Don't worry about that. <laughs> we're not All glad right, to have we, them. We're glad to have you. <laughs> You be Dr. John Blake. Dr. John Blake, co-lead tactical theology. Excerpt for introductory briefing, Project De- Deicidium. <clears throat> My colleague has explained the importance of this project. I am here to tell you not to be too hasty. 
His voice changed so much over the course of that sentence. <laughs> the notion of worship is not exclusive to what we would typically consider deific entities. Our modern society elevates nearly every facet of contemporary life beyond its inherent value and means. Democracy, family, capitalism. Each of such concepts defines our relationship to the world. These concepts are in flux. They change and shift based on individual minds, informed by the beliefs in the local collective consciousness, developing new forms of cultural shifts over time. What is the distinction, then, between such a concept and a deific entity? The difference we may be point to is that these concepts are inert, unless acted upon, responsive to the human rather than engage reciprocally. However, recent findings indicate this is a false assumption. We've begun to see that these concepts do respond. They influence us in ways we do not yet fully understand. Perhaps it is an issue of malice. Does the conceptual entity wish us harm to change our understanding of the world? But even then, the distinction is murky. Does a new political theory, relationship to nature, or revolution in technology not potentially straddle this divide? Have we not seen the world shift and change, responsive to what we presume to be non-anomalous processes and influences? The process of apotheosis, so prevalent in our shared myths, is ill-understood at best. We claim to know what a god is intrinsically, if not rationally, but we are ignorant as to how exactly they are formed within our collective consciousness. Um, actually, Among Us Wrath could help you out with this. <laughs> you just play lots of Among Us. Well, th wasn't the thing was it was a foundation computer, so they got like detailed analysis of how exactly how it became a god. Oh no, it was it was being sneaky about it. Oh, bloody hell! Our foundation, a secret gathering of people working towards a common goal, elevating the notion of securing containment and protection, may not seem so dissimilar from the faith-driven groups we target. This project is necessary, yes, but it is a grave uncertainty. This is a new relationship between humans and the divine. The very relation itself is a concept which, if elevated via worship, could have grave implications on the structure of reciprocity and deification. We risk idolizing the destruction of our idols, and we know not what ground we tread in doing so. Reciprocity, buddy. There, there. Thank you. I'll always be here to judge you when you slightly miss. Oh yeah. Something. How about that time I mispronounced something and there were only one set of footsteps on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> this is a level of references. We're now making references neither of us understand. You don't get it. You're fake Christian. No. Fake ass Christian. <laughs> Explain to me. It was like when what about, like I was always with you, says so Jesus, and he was like, "Oh yeah, if you're always with me, um, how come when I was walking across the beach, there's only one set of footprints?" <laughs> It's like, He's like, oh, because I, I was carried carrying you. you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that took me, dude. Yeah, Fake right. ass Christian. Hey, there's a lot of stuff blurred out, but I'm going to try something sneaky, which is I'm going to see. He's going to copy and paste it. it. It works! <laughs> I wonder what it says. All right. Um, activation log. 6659-3. Uh, uh, activation number 01. Totemized object. SCP-055. The skull of the last monarch of the Homo sapiens invisibili. A human subspecies which coexisted with Homo sapiens sapiens until their latent anti-memetic properties became evident, motivating their non anomalous relatives to enact their genocide over the course of the 19th century. Ooh. Warship group? I this is like anti-memetic stuff from what I recall. Disciples of the Unseen. Results... Successful identification and acceleration of mimetic construct. Construct subsequently unidentified as acceleration begins to deviate chaotically. Resulting conceptual quanta ejected from noesis. So, oh. What the fuck is noesis? Um, that's like... and do I have to copy and paste all this shit to end? This is a lot of work. Alright. <clears throat> Notes. While the results of activation 001 cannot be verified, it is currently hypothesized that the conceptual acceleration applied to the mimetic construct associated with... SCP-055 resulted in the complete obliteration of its neospheric relations. As a result, SCP-055 previously recorded information describing SCP-055, SCP-055, uh, alongside any association it had to the genocide of the Homo sapiens and Visibili, are now impossible for human subjects to conceptualize. So, wait, what's going on? Well, they can't. They, you can't even like. No, think of this stuff anymore, basically. Okay. SCP-055 has been transferred to... You can just copy-paste the whole thing, you know? Standard anomaly... Where? I, it won't Paragraph. fit the whole Discord. 
Let's put in my notepad. Standard <laughs> anomaly chamber 055. Oh, that's a good idea. Let me get a notepad open. Fuck you, Dodo, for making me do all this work. And all the other people who work. <laughs> Why do you just say hello, Dodo? I don't know. Dodo did this I'm bit. sorry. Who all did this? It was Dodo, PHMD, and one other, right? Yeah. <laughs> Liren. Liren? Okay. My apologies, Liren. Uh, Site-19 for containment. Efforts are underway to refine the selective application of conceptual acceleration to ensure the employed totems remain conceptual post So they did it too good that time. Uh, who did what now? They, they did it too well. Oh, whoopsie. So now it's like, uh, it's fucking gone. <laughs> uh, okay, thank, I love how I pull out the notepad and they're no longer doing that shit. Whoop. Okay, activation number 002. Totemized object, shriveled, mummified hand, possessing an atypical musculature structure. Worship group, followers of the angel's path. Results, successful identification and acceleration of mimetic constructs. Fuck you, so undivined your god. god. No, they, Wait, they, so got, they, made... they, they, they got rid of it. Oh. But they accelerated mimetic constructs. Yeah, because then it like breaks apart. Oh. Notes. Data from 6659-C indicates the complete destabilization of the targeted mimetic construct. The deific entity was successfully decommissioned. <sighs> Totemized, Totemized yeah. object, 2% milk, 1 carton crucifix. Worship group, disciples of St. Bernard in the path of the Savior. Results, successful identification and acceleration of a mimetic construct. Due to the worship got group's extensive historical... Isn't St. Bernard footprint, the dog? Um, <laughs> no. I don't think so. Uh, I, yeah, it fucking but, is. Saint Bernard is a dog breed. Uh, let me look up cat. No, I'm yeah, actually, he's also a guy. <laughs> but is it funny yeah. they did come up with dog first? <laughs> yeah. Well, the dog's more popular than the guy. Fuck the guy. Who cares? Notes. Due to the worship group's extensive... Saints are stupid anyways. Due to the worship group's extensive this guy doesn't know about the beach thing. He's calling Saint stupid. Who is this fucking guy? Well, like the whole thing with like Catholics are kind of like weird when it comes to Christianity. This is like shit that'll get you crucified in the wrong Christian circles because like um, they they have like a lot of different beliefs and like rituals. So like a main thing with most of Christianity is like the only people you look to 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 try and imitate. Not that you like ever can, but you're always trying to be better. Is like Jesus and God, right? But the idea with saints is Catholics were, are like, nah, this was such a good human. He was, like, close enough. You can just imitate these guys. And then in Catholicism, when you reach a certain age, you, like, pick your saint like it's a fucking class. Like an RPG class. Oh, yeah. And then that's, like, the guy you try to replicate in your life. And it's pretty weird. Uh, and, and there's, like, did you see that reliquary? Oh, my God. That someone did with Mary Magdalene. It's fucking badass. I did see it. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. Not normal. Catholics are weird, dude. You cannot I, I, trust I thought them. it was cool, I have to say. It's cool, but it's weird! Oh, yeah. It's, it's not normal! But, like, did you ever consider that when there was only one set of footprints on the skeleton? <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was St. Peter. Uh, the foundation is I was St. Peter carrying you being carried by Jesus. <laughs> it's the tower of people. <laughs> The foundation. Another thing with Catholicism too is like instead of praying to God or Jesus, what they do is they'll like pray to Mary because the idea is like, well, if he's why is Mary like his fucking secretary? So, so well, here's the logic, right? The idea is like, well, if Jesus was the perfect human, uh, the perfect guy would always listen to his mother, (laughs) and the and and being like like this holy mother, like feminine figure, she would be more sympathetic to you than if you prayed to Jesus directly. So you ask her, and then she asks her son, and then like a good son, he will do it. Is the end. It's weird, right? It's weird. Catholics are weird. They're not normal. I'm saying it now. I'm going to war with Catholicism. <laughs> this is a wild fucking episode. <laughs> the Foundation is currently engaged in an ongoing attempt to alter the mythology concerning St. Bernard to conflate with common Christian doctrine. This has included the canonization of St. Bernard as a Christian saint and the proliferation of artworks depicting the Lactatio Bernardi that stylistically imitate medieval and Renaissance artists. So the implication here, I guess, is St. Bernard was Israel, his own religion, and then they, like, killed yeah, that, and it's like, just... just put him in Christianity, just put him in there. Yeah, exactly. That's actually an interesting point. Like, maybe the reason Christianity is so conflated is because people keep... I mean, this partially did kind of happen with some things in real life, but, like, they just keep adding other shit onto it. Like, it's an all-consuming religion. Yeah, they keep releasing expansion packs. Yeah. All right, uh, you take over for me. Okay. <clears throat> Free activations omitted. Activation number seven. Totalized object, sacrificial dagger. Worship group, children of the Scarlet King. Results, successful identification, acceleration, mimetic construct. 
fucking owned. <laughs> Notes. Due to the high degree of formatological users in position of leadership within this worship group, various sects have continued to operate post-activation. However, surveillance indicates that anomalous phenomena associated with individuals are founded upon other formaturgic systems and bear no relation to the accelerated deific entity. Damn. <laughs> one Scarlet's your king. <laughs> Scarlet, get ready for crim- Crimson King. Activation number 182. Totemized object. Cervidae skull. That's a crow, right? Uh, I don't know. I think I think that's Corvidae. Let me check what Cervidae is. Uh, Cervidae's deer. Oh, <laughs> it's close. <laughs> Worship group. The ninth green lodge. Results. Inconclusive. Activation 182 manually aborted due to system failure. Is this implying that there was a deer skull that was so cool that a hunting lodge, like, worshipped it and it kind of became a god? Maybe. Because that's kind of sick. Notes. Following activation, Dash A and Dash B appeared to successfully isolate and accelerate the targeted deific entity. However, during Dash D's review of relevant memetic data, a series of cascading errors led to a catastrophic system failure. Subsequently, six of the vats composing Dash C ruptured. In addition to the expected artificial cerebrospinal fluid, the damage for that were found to contain very new amounts of salt water. Ooh. A power surge emanating from Dash A caused an electrical fire within the SCP's control room, and two six technicians supervising Dash B spontaneously demanifested. One individual remanifested approximately five meters above city level, adjacent to the end site. The other individual remains missing, presumed deceased. Was he part of the supermajority? Um, I guess so. <laughs> he was fine with it. As a result of this yeah, event, good. henceforth incidents E5. A theta. Yeah, well, I was making the symbol with my mouth. Uh, you hear the shot. It sounds like a plane strider in World of Warcraft. It's like. <laughs> the operation of the SCP has been suspended. Repairs to the various systems and investigations of the cause of incident E5 are underway. Then number four, post-incident debriefing. This is the part Ooh. of the article where they all shout at each other. Oh, Lord. A- okay. AV transcript post E5 slash 1. I'm not going to stop doing that, by the way. Location. Conference room aboard the site. Located on deck B1. Personnel present. Here the fucking... Oh, hell yes, he's here. Dr. Sandra Milton. Dr. John Blake. Do- Captain Sweden Jones. <laughs> oh, you have to be Sweden. I, I will be. Technician Rupert Sordai. Maintenance and operation technicians for SCP A B C don't have names. All right. I want to be uh, Sandra and R- Rupert, if you can be John and. Sweet. And other guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't think other guys will show up in the. Forward. Text. Following the events of Incident E5, personnel assigned to maintenance and operation SCP were assembled to discuss the event. The following transcript occurs after a summary of ongoing repairs to Dash A B and Dash C. Begin transcript. Thank you, Grace. I'm glad to hear the repairs on SCP-6659-B are underway. We've requisitioned the parts you needed. They'll arrive with tomorrow's supply drop. Alrighty. Next up is Dr. Sodai, who's noticed some discrepancies Blake, in the data right? from... Yeah, I already forgot. <laughs> you're Blake, Sweden, and the other technicians yeah. of relevant. And Soren's best friend. Yeah, and Soren's best friend. I'm Soren. Who's noticed some discrepancies in the data from Dash C during incident E5, Rupert? Uh, hello, er, uh, hi everyone. Sorry, <laughs> bigger crowd than I was expecting. <laughs> sorry, er, sorry. <laughs> it's alright, Rupert. Go ahead when you're ready. He's certainly rubbing the back of his head right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Oh, and then he does the thing where he's like holding his hand out and he sticks the finger up in front of him like a TikTok. He's like, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking dagger bump with those. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Just to clarify, the discrepancy didn't occur during I'm the incident. I'm picturing this. I'm like waiting for like, to get the bullet of the evidence I need to make you like fucking freak out. <laughs> With the tanks rupturing and everything. The court's like spinning around as you're giving this. <laughs> yeah. The whole system went haywire. <laughs> Sorry. Getting ahead of myself. No, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, tell me. Tell me how it the is. The system went haywire before the tanks ruptured. You're lying. Ah, ah, no. <laughs> You're like a... <laughs> Sorry, let's continue. Everyone, everyone here knows Dash C monitors previously accelerated memetic constructs in the newosphere to make sure everything goes as it should, meaning there's no latent activity within the dissociated construct. We call that baseline state sterile. Assuming 6659 functions as intended, this entails no interaction between data points which previously composed the construct. 
Well, while reviewing the data... Excuse me, I burped. Get we out. noticed some activity in the data cluster of a deific entity that we'd previously successfully accelerated beyond conception. These slides are representations from Dash C over a six-hour period. Uh, sorry, how, how do I... Right side to the pointer. Are you telling me a technician doesn't know how to work a goddamn power? You're so point? nervous. Uh, my immersion's been completely broken. He's, he, he only point. works with anomalous tech. He doesn't know how to do normal stuff. All right, go ahead. You're blank. This is your I already said. Oh. There we go. So, the color represents the intensity of the interactions. Oh, these are pretty. Yeah, that's a lot of color. Who made these? Where's, where's the artist credit? Who made these? These are cool. Uh, I just did what they told me. <laughs> Shout out to unknown artist who I don't see credit. They're probably credit in the comments, yeah. I would hope. After this window, the activity... Credit to the to artist. Nothing. Credit to the... Yeah, that's like the <laughs> lamest like way to credit, by the way. <laughs> like... You should always use the name, but I don't fucking know it. I'll check the comments later um, and then say it. Tech Sada. <clears throat> After this window, the activity dissipated back to nothing, as though it hadn't even happened, which was part of the reason we missed it until now. This is highly irregular. I picked the wrong two people to voice, by the way. Fuck me. <laughs> this is highly irregular. You chose the voices. <laughs> As you may be, able, I didn't re, I didn't know how much each person would talk. I was like, oh, he wants to be Sweden. And I'm pissed off that Sweden's not said anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you may be able to, Rupert, sorry, are you suggesting that this previous activation didn't function properly? No, that's the odd part. The activation was completely successful. Oh dear. They double checked all the relevant data, Sarah. This is the only irregularity. <laughs> oh my God! Wait, is their name Sarah or is it Sandra? Sandra. <laughs> Ah, oh, that would have been perfect. Well, it's entirely normal. For, is, is our thumbnail this week going to be Dang and Rampa? It has to be. Oh, God damn it. This is the only irregularity. Well, it's entirely normal for new lines of conceptual association to form as human conception expands and changes. Our use of 6659 should have rendered this impossible. So this was spontaneous? Just a random series of interactions? That's one theory, yes, uh, but... No, um, that's wrong. <laughs> Go on, that's what he said. <laughs> no. <clears throat> well, that sort of spontaneity doesn't seem feasible, given our understanding of new spherics in 6659. It's a linked network. Things respond to each other, but the individual points within this data cluster were completely isolated. They didn't just interact along previous lines of relation, either. They formed new ones. Something like that requires this section of the cluster to be acted upon. But as we've already covered... Do you mean to suggest that something external to the new sphere caused this? I'm not exactly qualified to say. <laughs> Would something like that even be possible? Did you, Where is Sweden? Did you hear me uh, <laughs> looking across the table? Looking across the table, <laughs> I did. I could hear the acting. <laughs> The truth is, we wouldn't have any way of knowing definitional. I assume definitively. Definitionally, whatever, fuck it. We can't comprehend something which functions outside the realm of our comprehension. In theory, we shouldn't even be able to reason about it in the abstract. The fact that we're able to do so demonstrates the futility of even attempting to think about it. Can't we run some tests? Try and isolate this whatever it is by mapping the new lines of association? Not only would that entail engineering new brain computers capable of more complex thought than our own, it would be inadvertent. When do I get to talk? <laughs> I I piloted this site out here in the deep blue sea. We need to get the ring to Mordor. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> <I'm an axe. laughs> I know a guy Italian who can smuggle us in. <laughs> What's happening? How many leaps my and mind, franchises my have we done? sanity. What? How many leaps between franchises have we done so far? Jesus, you're gonna break the fucking space time continuum. I'm gonna break the new sphere, and I should. <laughs> it would be inadvisable due to the fundamental property that we can't know what we're dealing with. It's what we designed the damn machine to do. Why have it if we're not targeting new threats? We've seen what the ethic entities are capable of. If this isn't responsive to the SCP, or what the hell Dash B is doing, we're in the dark. We need to know what we're dealing with. Robots, would it be possible to try to isolate whatever the new complex causing the interactions is? Extra, extra. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I need to speak with the team. And, Rupert, stop. We're not getting started on this. At least not until repairs are finished. This is ridiculous. We need to act quickly. Whatever's going on, we need to be ready to respond. And the only way we're able to do... Someone's dead, John. 
Christ, would you get out of your own damn head? This isn't just esoteric theory. You're part of the super majority, for God's sake. <laughs> We're at, what, almost 48 hours? No wanted. body, no trace, nothing, just gone. What the hell are we supposed to write to inform her next of kin? <sighs> Look, it's out of our hands anyway. A memo came in. From, uh, Dr. Sweden did not talk the entire time. I'm considering matters. <laughs> <laughs> Neutral. A memo came in from 05 earlier. We're pausing testing for the foreseeable future. No. They've also decided to share information related to 6659, an incident <laughs> E5, with specialists at other foundation sites. So everyone needs to be ready to share the reports I know you've been working on. Are you shutting us down? Not yet, and we should be grateful they ha we should be glad they haven't. We're just hitting pause and getting some more eyes on the situation, figuring out what's going on. On that note, we've got Dr. Place HMCD on his way to M site to advise repairs on Dash C. I believe he'll have some questions for you, Rupert. Afterward. Yeah. During the remainder of the conference, Dr. Blake was seen on camera leaving the conference room in an agitated state. The remainder of the meeting addressed ongoing repairs to 6659. Oh, sorry, things are coming up. <clears throat> Technicians were selected to liaison with off-site specialists to address concerns regarding the potential causes of incident E5. And with that, I think, with that uh, yeah. little cliffhanger, that's a good point to uh, leave off in time being. Jeez, oh, Just what a long through. article. But... but but it's fun. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's an interesting topic. I like the concept, and I also think we made our own fun a lot this episode. Yeah, I love really fun just fun. not shooting the shit. Yeah, that was a good time. That's probably one of our better episodes, I think. All right, so are you ready to read some comments? Absolutely, absolutely. Let me get those up in front of me. Let me, let me have a look. All right. Um, oh, whoops, I accidentally liked something as you. I need to switch to my account what? on YouTube. What? I'm sorry. I, I unliked it immediately. You know after. I don't like sorry. stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, ooh, a lot of comments this week. I'm so excited. Okay, hang on. I'm so excited. There's a big number of comments. That makes me happy. Oh, yeah, you uh, made them right, happy you ready? finally. I just went through and liked them all. Okay. <clears throat> and there. Like the analysis. Okay. Three, uh, Crocat says, read some fun articles this episode. Brought a big old slippery smile to my face. Hmm. <laughs> Nice one. Trathalia says, Nice smile. Hey, I like your, nice your comments. I like Post it, it again. <laughs> Do it more. <laughs> Trathalia says, Hey, SCP-423, 583, and 158 aren't linked in the description. How irresponsible. Hello. <laughs> also says, Late comment, but Tanhoney, when reading Spanish names and words with Q, you ignore the letter U. Sorry. Don't post yeah. this again, please. Uh, Sereny Plickett, which absolutely sounds like a name out of like a Lemony Snicket novel, uh, says, They Might Be Giants is my favorite band, and this is my favorite SCP podcast on the Citadel. Aww. They Might Be Giants is a, is a pretty decent band. Um, what's the Citadel? Um, it's a reference to Mass Effect. <gasps> ah, okay. Meep Meep says... I have finally time traveled from Monday of next week to here, so that I may comment on this video before you read the comments here. That way, I can listen. to Do you the understand what you've done to the space-time continuum? Yeah, we already have to hop loops now. <laughs> oh God, Banker Paul off the goddamn essay. Banker Paul. Well, he's we got the news. Teach you the, uh, you... Writer Chip is tighten up, edit, keep it like have your words after. Just give us. The, you know what I'm saying? Little, if you're not gonna read it, I'll read it. <laughs> Uh, kind of, uh, I got this. Kind of weird that December is coming on the 7th of March. Perhaps it is a prophecy that Hamilton will be instrumental in the battle to come, and the fate of Tanhony Towers, and by extension the world. Password. Oh, you, you know what? You want to be December? There is no password. Failures. <laughs> it's like the oh, master yeah. from Fallout. <laughs> it's like all the different voices. Failures. 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 Oh my god. Fun fact of the week. In Super Paper Mario, part of the prophecy for the fate of the multiverse is that a man in green will determine whether it is saved or destroyed. We must destroy this man before he can get in the way of our plans. This week on DSCP News, brought to you in part by Orchid and Captain, Darnell broke his computer, destroying its consciousness. I did not break my computer. You destroyed he his repaired consciousness the corpse. No. He repaired the corpse and now uses an empty husk of a once loyal friend. A pig has flown. People were talking in the Havoc Moon channel again. Ouch. Oof. 
Uh, shout out to... No, I'm not going to say that, but there's no Havoc Moon this week. Uh, frogs! Don't Wendigo know captured the... I don't know. Wendigo captured the souls of several discoverers and put them into the effigies of... Di- effigies Very of unique way of spelling effigies, by effigies by the there, Paul. <laughs> effigies of dinosaurs in a distant land. Unfortunately, they were unable to protect them and they were slaughtered mercilessly. The view count goes down. I have to create more fucking viewers now? Are you serious? I know, right? <laughs> bring me, writing, bring me the being dolls. <laughs> February. As of, February? Who was February I again? I forgot. No, 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 they apparently they now deal with the being dolls, which is how I create viewers. Yeah. February's are like, of course, Master Tan, honey. Oh, he's like a butler. I like that. Yeah. He's like, of course. As of writing, Gardic phone wish. may happen tomorrow. Hashtag, hashtag. It did happen. I was there. Well, actually, no. What the fucking f- Jack House, Jackbox happens. It did. Uh, Orchid says, the true art is the fart. Yes, it is. News, shut up, Orchid. Yes, it is. Jack a day drew chat rod pile from Havoc Moon. JKK say he got his wisdom removed. How he'll make those wisdom skill checks without his wisdom. He's going to keep rolling natural ones and it's going to be so bad. He's going to put tomatoes and fruit salad. No, this one is entirely orchids. This week of DSCP News is just the Banker and Orchid podcast. Orchid says we need a podcast. But this is actually news. just like the master it from Fallout. Right. It's like, we need a podcast. We need a podcast. We need a podcast. <laughs> I suppose that's all the news we have for this week. Um, thanks for tuning in, I guess. Dawn of the 1,085th day, 240 hours remain. We all list that left eye glasses of wine to the creation of a new world. <laughs> it infinito deicidium. <laughs> Dino Tales says, I really like 4028. Definitely one of the more less complicated pataphysical articles. Same with 583, though I do wish that one had a test log to expand on in a bit more. Oh well. What's 583? 583, I believe, was the choking one. It was like, oh. I don't remember that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm currently at the comment reading. I can't wait for Darnell to read my comment in a normal vo- Wait, hold on. Wait, how did I read his comment? I'm assuming a funny voice. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I did it like, um, who was the, the, the guy in Your Turn to Die, the little kid? Uh, Jin. Gin. Gin. Yeah, I read it like Gin. Oh, hell no, I'm not taking that Sorry, suspect. Wolf. The, the Gin <laughs> voice is a great fucking honor. I don't know what he's on. It about. is. You should be very honored. Anomalous, send Alonzo Keanu on Darnell's ass. Oh my god, he, he could actually <laughs> fuck us <laughs> up. You don't give Anomalous orders, okay? Anomalous. We give Anomalous orders. Anomalous, what are you doing? Get away from that keyboard. Stop editing. Anomalous, please. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. Uh... And I must put in 50 Wilhelm. Ah! He's editing the bonds between my atoms, Darnell. <laughs> no! Oh, uh, how, the fall of the House of Tanhony. The House of Tanhony? What was your legacy? Um, well, the Tower of Tanhony... Well, the sea, the Tower of Tanhony grew from the House of Tanhony. Okay. Which I, you say you have a house, yet you have... Of <laughs> you say you have a house, yet you have no bitches and no air? I've got 12 house, fucking bitches. It? I've got Rivorian generals. They're all your bitches, yeah. is what you're telling me? Um, okay. Well, I didn't know we were sleeping with the help. <laughs> when you saw one step of footprints <laughs> on the beach, that was when my bitches were carrying me. <laughs> that was when my 12 Gregorian generals were carrying me. <laughs> oh, lord. That was when the problems clown carried me. Comedy Man Kelp says, there, hey guys. One of us carried you from the beach. <laughs> Oh, wait, is it that or is it Danganronpa, though? Oh, we I think choose. we have to go for Danganronpa, because that was a unique fucking opportunity, because we're never going to talk about Danganronpa again. That's true, I hate Danganronpa. I fight that. Comment. Comment. <laughs> You're allowed to like it, I, I have a personal reason for hating it. Uh, Comedy Man Cub says, hey guys, I have some killing news. game, that's his personal reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did, fucking, do you remember your cast? That was my killing game. <laughs> Comedy Man Kelp says, hey guys, I have some excellent news. After years upon years of saving up my money, I have finally made enough to purchase my very own windmill farm. I sure hope my wonderful windmills are not besieged by any pairs of mischievous rapscallions. Huzzah! Hamilton says clueless. <laughs> He's so clueless. He doesn't know how much we fucked up those windmills. Uh, Sobek says, glad you liked my recommendation from last time, Darnell. Maybe Tanhoni should listen. I am transfigured into a pillar of salt, my many sins engraved upon it. Oh my god. December, December password. Out. <laughs> December password. One X. Uh, do you want to read this in the December voice? Six are gone. Five came from Ash, and one from Void. All went to nowhere. Still, 
Their memories have power. Oh my god. These sound like the fucking loading screen things of like the main villain taunting you in a video game. <laughs> like when you die to Arkham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh lord. JTKC says... I'm starting to get worried that worried is... like December is requesting passwords on our videos as he slowly breaks free. Yeah, he's like becoming stronger than us, which is a problem. He's catching up in the loops. Exactly, he's been pursuing us all this time. The loops are getting shorter because imagine time like a piece of rope that's like twirled around in big loops and he's pulling the rope towards him so the loops are getting tighter and tighter. That's what he's doing right now. And <laughs> that's why the lore is disintegrating. <laughs> oh. uh, JT says, damn, I can't believe I missed a banger hippo article. But I guess that means I discovered SCP. Laugh track credits. Uh, on paper, it's a complicated metafictional being, but at the core of all that is a simple and tragic story. God, I love hippo stuff. Looking back at my early favorites, even when I didn't check the author, Hippo probably wrote half of Hippo them. Hippo is so fucking good, though. <laughs> Epic episode, and shouldn't... December got him. No! JT! <laughs> These fuckers. He goes back as, like, corrupted JT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, was this one of your... Now favorites? you don't stand the ghost of a chance. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh my god, can someone make a DSCP abridged series? How would that work? Just someone doing like know. offensive impersonations of us? I guess. It wouldn't be that hard, would it? <laughs> hey, what's happening? What do you mean? Okay, there it's it December is. December pay? What do you mean what's happening? <laughs> I sorry, I accidentally yanked out a cord. That's no good. Um, where was I? Uh Orchid's common, I think. Hang on. In Memento. Sorry, I just had to deal with a Gregorian general. Oh my god. <clears throat> Alright, can you hear me? Yeah. Alright, Orchid Stream says, Okay guys, I have a plan. From now on, us Aetherheads have to fill our comments with references to Aetheral space. The tower is incomprehensible if you don't read it. So all the podcast listeners who aren't Aether Chads yet will cave in and read it. Like Heartbeat Gemini, you know? Smile? Yeah. What are your thoughts of the author of Aetheral space? I would support anything that spreads the word. Anything Hang on, can I... All. Can I... I need to send you something. Okay, send me something. So there's a video right now in my, like, on the fucking side of my YouTube as I'm reading these. Okay. And the thumbnail, I thought for a second, was a really fucked up version of your little YouTuber avatar. You see it? <laughs> <laughs> That's December. <laughs> He's like original. a little demon baby. <laughs> a little demon baby version of you. How fucked up is that? <laughs> He's got a big red collar. Oh my god. Uh, Guare SCP says, La Historia de Don Quixote de la Mancha is one of my favorite articles on the wiki. So really glad you liked it too. I usually am not a fan of metafiction, but Hippo makes it fucking work. Probably because they don't focus on the mechanics of it too much. Yes! You, you, Thank you! Seriously, you don't want to know what kind of imaginons his spear's made out of? Ah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's like they, it's like sometimes I feel like SCP authors get caught up too much in trying to explain why things work the way they do. It's like, who cares? Uh, an anomalous writer says, more great hippo. Let's go. Oh, yeah. All right, I think that's everything. Well, that would come to the end. Another step behind us has been consumed. <laughs> we can't go home again. Oh, Lord. All right, what's the name of the episode? Danganronpa. All capitals, one word. <laughs> We barely talk about Dink. We talk about it more than usual. <laughs> That's fair. All right. We'll see you guys next time in the murder game. Bye. Bye.